matter what's on clouds, they rock with the ship of mine. The light of my Savior will lead me safely through the night. Oh, my ship And my sails may be torn. I shall rest in the eye of the storm. If you know it, just sing with me. No matter what storm clouds may rock the ship of mine. disappointments, there are going to be mishaps, there are going to be storms in our seas, there's going to be trouble in our life, sometimes it's blood, sometimes it's sweat, sometimes tears, but whatever it is, we need to anchor our hope in God, amen? Right. amen. Praise God. Let me see the hands of all those who have never had a problem, you just never had a problem, you just sail smoothly through life, no challenges, no difficulties, no need for sweat. No need for blood, no need for tears. You just kind of sail right through life smoothly. I think I'm in the right church. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I extend all the greetings to your pastor, my friend and sister, colleague in the Lord, Pastor Chitso, in her absence. Praise God. And those of you who are holding the fort in her absence, I applaud you, I commend you. Praise God for the great work that you're doing Amen. at Charismatic Renewal. Ministries. Amen. Close enough? Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> you've been keeping it down. You've been holding it for you. You've been holding the fort. You have been lifting high the bloodstained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today I'd like to encourage you to keep moving forward regardless of the challenges and difficulties that might occur in your lives as individuals and also as a church. Amen. 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 Um, I hope that I might be able to bring your hopes to another level. By the time I'm done, bring your faith to another level. Bring your level of determination one more step up by the time I'm done in applying the words of God. Praise God. Um, will you turn with me, please, to the book of Second Samuel? I'm going to use a passage from this scripture from the scriptures just to bring out my point. And I'm using a character, Mephibosheth. A lot of syllables. We Jamaicans like to cut names short. If your name is Solomon, we might just call you Solomon. And so I'm not going to be going through my sermon trying to say Mephibosheth for the entire time. I'm just going to be Jamaican and call him Mephi. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. So, for the purpose of my presentation, his name is Mephi. Second Samuel chapter 4. Verse 4 says, And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son 
that was laying off his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephi. <laughs> Praise God. Here's a story of Saul having died and... Well, the news came that Saul died. His son, Jonathan, also died in the same battle. What we're hearing here is that, we're reading here is that um, so Jonathan had a son whose name was Mephibosheth. The news came that the father and the grandfather died. That was a king and the king's son. Now, one would assume by custom or tradition that the son would inherit this, the, the, the throne of the father and then the grandson is pretty much next in line. So Mephi had good things coming to him. He was the son, he was a grandson of the king, King Saul. He was to have lived in the palace and would have lived a very privileged, privileged life. He would have been spoilt, pampered, loved, esteemed, and respected. When the news came, however, that Jonathan died and Saul died, he was in the care of a nurse. Now, the king having been killed and the son being killed signified that the army was defeated. And if the army is defeated, it would just be a matter of time before the, the enemy sweeps in and take over the, the kingdom, including the palace. And so the nurse knew that she had better run. And so she grabbed a child who was five years old and ran for her life. Thank you very much. But while she was running, she fell. And the child, five years old, fell from her arms and was injured. Time went by and we will read in 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. And David said, now David was now the king. Saul was dead, Jonathan was dead, the grandson was injured and was nowhere to be found. He was no longer within that community or in that vicinity. He had fled, the nurse had fled with him. David now being king said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? We know Jonathan and David were buddies. And there was the house and there was of the house of Saul a servant named Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king Jonathan, Hath yet a son which is lame in on his feet? Mm. Do you, do you, do you, did, did you pick up something here? Yes. He didn't even say Jonathan had a son and his name was Mephibosheth. He was identified by his infirmity. Mm. He was identified by the most negative thing about him. Mm. Not even his name was mentioned at this point. Mm. What was mentioned and what identified this son was that he was laying in his feet. Mm. I'll come back to that point. <clears throat> and the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto him, the said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodibar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. Now when Mephi, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not. 
for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake and will restore thee all the land of Saul and thy father and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually praise God what is brought out by the story more than anything else is that no matter how far you have fallen there is hope for you to recover no matter how much you failed there is still hope for you to rise again and still be a winner praise God there are a few notes I need to make I need to mention praise God now let us examine let us examine this story a bit and look on the life of Mephibosheth There are four factors against Mephi. Can we call him Mephi? Is that all right? Mephi, go ahead. Amen. There are four factors, four mitigating factors, coming up against the life of, of Mephi. One, his past hurt could hinder him from being the person that he was meant to be. Nobody remembered so much that he existed. Mm -hmm. David had to ask, is there anybody? Is, is there anybody that is related to Saul? Mm -hmm. You would think that because Saul was, Saul was the king and you know he was esteemed and all that, that any relative of Saul would have been mentioned and would have been known, mm -hmm. but nobody knew about him. Nobody knew about him. He was not the person that he was meant to be, to be. because of his hurt. Before. Now, where Mephi's concern is past hurt, the first factor against him is that his past hurt could hinder him from being the person he was meant to be. Have you ever felt like you're kind of not in the place that you were meant to be? You're not doing what you were born to do? You're not in the right place? Have you ever felt that? Like a crab in the wrong shell? A bird in the wrong nest? You're in the wrong job, amongst the wrong people, wrong family, wrong house, wrong community. And so, wrong state of mind, wrong state of health. His hurt changed people's opinion as to who he was. And within himself, he knew that he was not what he was meant to be. The second thing. Mephibosheth saw himself less because of his infirmity. Number three, he seemed to be stuck right where he was, never to move forward. He was a lame guy. That's all people knew him. Um, that's all they knew of him. He was sick. He was lame in his feet. Sent to Lodibar. And it would seem as though he was stuck in Lodibar, never to move forward. And the fourth, factor against him was that there were there was so much distance between where he was and where he would have wanted to be can anybody relate to those four things the last one i repeat he was so far there was so much distance between where he was and where he would have wanted to be praise god I'd like to include you to an extent in my presentation and I'd like for us to make four declarations today and the first is my injury will not determine my destiny praise God can we say that my injury will not determine my destiny the fact that I'm injured does not mean I'm not going to get to where I need to get to. I'm sick, I'm bleeding, I'm hurting, I'm hopping. But it doesn't mean that because I'm injured, I won't get to where I need to be. So the first point I'd like for us to tell ourselves, the first declaration I'd like for us to make, is that my injury will not determine my destiny. Bless be the name of God. Amen. You see, we think that we have a better chance of succeeding in life if we are in the best physical condition 
And so we exercise and we, 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 we adopt the right diet and we, 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 we do the very best to be at our best. We think the same thing regarding our finances. If our finances are in order, if our health is the best, if our relationships are good, if our career is going as we expected it to go, then we believe that there's a better chance of us reaching that which we were meant to reach in life, achieving what we were meant to achieve in life. But then if there is injury, it alters the trajectory of our lives, it alters our hopes, it affects the way we think about ourselves, it affects the way we think about our future, because we are injured in one way or the other. He will, so we watch our diet, we work hard, we save our money, we try to do good in our relationships. Because that mindset, praise God, leads us to a place of devastation when things break down and things are not going the way that we expect them to go. We are, dis, we are, we are devastated, we are disappointed, we are disappointed rather. And very often we give up on life, give up on others, give up on ourselves and sometimes even give up on God. But I'd like to say to us today, when life drops us, hurt us financially, emotionally, physically, we sometimes develop a total different trajectory of our lives, as I said. But it doesn't matter how hurt we are. I'd like to say to us this morning that our hurt will not determine our injury will not determine our destiny. There is a God that we serve. Amen. Blessed be the name of God. Amen. It doesn't matter how far it seems to be during our hurt. During our time of pain, you look around and you, you can't see any semblance of God. You cannot feel any presence of God. It's as though you are on your own this time. And all you can focus on is your injury, your pain, your hurt, and the circumstances that lead to that. And God, it seems, cannot be found. But in the midst of your hurt, there is a voice, praise God. There is a whisper in the wind. There's a vibration. There's an energy. There's an angel that is standing here. Hallelujah. Just waiting for you to readjust and to realize, blessed be the name of God, that your injury will not affect your destiny. Blessed be the name of God. Too many of us give up too easily. Too many of us, hallelujah, wallow in our pain. Yes. And it, it is human to focus on pain. Amen. Because pain cannot be easily ignored. No. Right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. Yes. But I'd like for us to understand that sometimes in the midst of pain, God is working out your gain. Blessed be the name of God. Amen. And so if there's anybody hurting here today, if there's anybody who's been injured in any way, any aspect of your life, if you're hurting, if you're hopping, hallelujah, if you're bleeding, if you're in tears, if your heart is broken, God is saying to you today, you can still fulfill the purpose for which you were born because your injury will not determine your destiny. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, you know, I, 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 it's very, very important for us to look at ourselves, praise God, and compare ourselves with anybody else in the scripture or anybody else in the world and know that what God has done for that person, he can do for you. Amen. Blessed be the name of God. I'm going to step out of the Bible for a minute and use an example of someone who was badly hurt. I'm sure everybody knows the name Oprah. Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Anybody? Yes. Yes. Everybody knows the name Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey was molested as a child. And the molestation was so severe, she couldn't take the pain anymore, and so she ran away from home. At age 13. At age 14, Oprah got pregnant. At 14. There was no way 
she could carry that baby, but then she figured that that baby might bring hope to her life. And she started getting a little hope because at least there was somebody to love her. But the baby died. Molested, had to run away from home at 13. At 14, got pregnant and the baby died. Soon after birth, she was injured. She was injured physically, emotionally, psychologically. But somehow there was something within her. There was something within her that kept her going. There was something within her that made her believe that regardless of all her hurt, she was born for a purpose and she was not gonna die until she fulfilled that purpose. We have to be resolute. We have to concretize our minds. We have to be firm in our beliefs. We gotta believe in ourselves. We gotta believe in our life. We gotta believe in our God. And regardless of what is happening in our life, we gotta continue to believe. Amen. There was no foundation on which she had to stand. There was nothing in her life that suggested that she would amount to anything. But now she's worth $2.5 billion with a B. And she's one of the most popular and wealthiest women in this part of planet Earth. Do you dare to believe today? Do you dare to believe? Do you dare to look the devil in his face and say, listen, I don't care what you've done. I'm still gonna win. Do you dare to still believe in yourself when you look yourself in the mirror? and remember the scars, the mistakes that you've made, the hurt that you've experienced. You can have to look in the face of that person you see in the mirror and believe in that person with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and to trust the God who brought you here. Amen. Believe. That's right. Your injury will not determine your destiny. Amen. Bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The next point I'd like to make, and there are four points I'd like to make before I leave here today. And I have a feeling that by the time I'm done making these four points, somebody, bless be the name of God, is going to leave out here walking more firmly Amen. with chest Amen. out and shoulders broad and chins up. Amen. Hallelujah. And a heart and soul and spirit firm with faith and hope in God, knowing that you're about ready to face the world regardless of what you experience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second point is this. And let's say together. My infirmity, my infirmity does not determine, does not determine my, identity. my identity. Praise God. Hallelujah. So my infirmity does not determine my identity. I, I am who I am regardless of my infirmity. I mentioned earlier when we were reading that when, when um, Ziba was brought before David, whatever his name was, was brought before David and asked, is there a relative of Saul? He said, yes, there's a grandson whose leg is lame. That's how he was identified. He was identified by his infirmity. You know, we all have weaknesses. We all have imperfections. And those imperfections cause us to feel less than who we really are. We walk around dragging a load of past mistakes, past misfortunes and trauma. We walk around dragging the weight of our weaknesses, ignoring our strengths. We tend to remember the misfortunes in our lives and the, 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 the frailties that we have in our lives or bad habits and somehow we identify ourselves by the even more unfortunate is that folks also do the same thing. Folks create our identity based on our weaknesses, based on our misfortunes instead of our strength. Deep within, they know who you really are. But they look on the fact that you're limping financially. You're limping emotionally. 
and, and they create an impression of your identity around those misfortunes. Mm. Miss Mary's son, yes, man. Don't know this Miss, Miss Mary's son, the one that went to prison and come back. His name is John. <laughs> Why don't you say Miss Mary's son whose name is John? No, Miss Mary's son, the one that went to prison. The guy went to prison for three months. And his entire life, you are going to identify him as Miss Mary's son that went to prison. Because he went to prison for three months. <laughs> The guy's an engineer. He went to all different type of universities. He had, he, he's had the best jobs. But nobody says Miss Mary's son who was the engineer. Or Miss Mary's son who went to that university. It's Miss Mary's son who went to prison. Folks tend to identify you by the worst thing they can think of about you. Isn't that unfortunate? And so very often we identify ourselves in the same manner as others identify us by the very worst things in our lives. And there are many of us in here today, praise God, who would be smiling more if we were thinking of ourselves in a better way. If we were focusing on the strengths that we have. If we were focusing on the good things about us. If we were focusing on the wonderful things that have happened in our lives. But somehow we are identified by our infirmities. But let's say again, my infirmity does not create my identity. Praise God. I am who God says I am. I'm blood washed, sanctified by the Spirit of God, empowered by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. And so when I walk, I'm going to walk with a bump in my step. I'm going to walk with pep in my step. I'm going to walk, praise God. So folks wonder which, which palace I'm coming out of, which king is my father. Hallelujah. Because you know what? The royal blood of Jesus Christ flows in my veins. I'm the son of the living God. I'm a child of the king. Amen. And I'm going to be identified as that. You talk about me if you want to talk about me. Remember the bad things about me if you want to. Say all manner of things against me. But I know who I am. Hallelujah. Because my past has nothing to do with my future. And my weakness, hallelujah, is not going to cancel out my strengths. And my fortunes are not going to, hallelujah, be, 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 be put down because of my misfortunes. I know who I am. I know who I am. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So when folks look on you Hallelujah. with disdain, look down on you, blessed be the name of God, they don't know that it's just your shadow they're looking on. Yeah. If they were to start looking up because you are esteemed, you are lifted high by the blood of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's your shadow that's on the ground, not you. Hallelujah. Amen. My infirmity does not determine my identity. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's be the name of God. Amen. Don't allow anybody to say, yes, man, it's Miss Mary's son. One who went to prison. Oh, yes, it is Miss Elizabeth daughter, the dickhead one. They, they, they look for something negative. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I'd like for us today to search into your life and find the best thing you can think about yourself and wrap that around you. Amen. Hallelujah, wrap the best things about you. Praise God, hallelujah. It might be that there's something about you that you don't like, but there are many other things about you that you definitely should like. Amen. Hallelujah. Search, search, search your life. Amen. Search your past, Amen. search your present. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Search, search. And I promise you, you're going to find an abundance of things about yourself that you can be proud of. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There are infirmities, there are weaknesses, yes, Lord. there are frailties. Yes. Praise God. Amen. But there is strength Amen. and there is beauty. Amen. Blessed Amen. be the name of God. There's talent, yes. there's gift, and there are some wonderful 
beautiful, wonderful things about you that you can identify yourselves with and identify yourselves by. Praise God. So don't allow your infirmity to determine your identity. Blessed be the name of God. There is a gentleman by the name of Stephen Hawkins. You can look him up. Stephen Hawkins was born in 1963. They gave him just a few years to live because he had a very serious disease, yes. a degenerated disease that very soon after his birth, it, the only movement that was possible was just moving his fingers a little bit and moving his eyes. Yes. Everything else about him was crippling <laughs> except his brain. And Stephen Hawkins has become one of the most, well, he died at age 76. Mm. He became one of the most famous physicists. Yes. He went through Cambridge University. He shocked the entire world by his brilliance. In one of his books sold 10 million copies. And since Einstein, there's hardly a brain that can be compared with Stephen Hawking's brain. Mm -hmm. He couldn't move anything except his eyes from left to right. He couldn't even move his mouth. There was a particle machine that they attached to his throat that transferred the vibrations of his voice box into audible and sounds that could be determined as words. It was technology why he was able to be understood he was a cripple. He could only twitch his fingers and move his eyes. And yet the world knows about Stephen Hawkins. There's hardly any physicist that can be compared with him. His brilliance outshone them all. His infirmity did not determine is identity. When you think about Stephen Hawkins, you're not thinking about Stephen Hawkins was a paraplegic. You're thinking about the great, brilliant Stephen Hawkins. When you walk into a room, or before you walk into a room of people, praise God, think about the best things in your life. The best things about you. And then just open the door wide and walk inside firmly, knowing who you are. Very often we walk into buildings timid because we know people hear things about us, and we know people are going to see the, the, the bump on the, on, on the tip of our nose. And we know that people are going to realize that we walk funny. And people are going to realize this, and people are going to realize that. I'm not dressed like everybody else. And so we walk into the room with timidity. Because we already identify ourselves as being less than all the others who are in the room. We identify ourselves by the bad things people know about us. But the devil is a liar. He's the one who's trying to fool you. He's the one who's trying to keep you down, praise God. But don't allow that to happen. Walk into that room. Walk amongst those people. Blessed be the name of God, thinking about the very best things about yourself. Hallelujah. Your infirmity, tell, let me tell you something. Your infirmity, your weakness, your frailties, your bad habits, hallelujah, your failures do not determine who God sees you as. Amen. When that fellow was coming back from feeding pigs, the prodigal son, he wasted all his money, wasted his father's money. He was now eating the same things as the pigs were eating. He was all in dirt and mud. He said to himself, I'm going to go back to my father. And I'm going to say to my father, I am no longer worthy to be called a son. Mm -hmm. Did you see what he did to himself? Mm -hmm. I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. Take me back as a hired servant. And so he walked towards his father's house with that mentality. I am not worthy to be a son. But God, the Bible says that his father saw him from afar off 
and he was dirty. He was smelly as he came closer to his father. Hallelujah. The, 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 the aroma that was coming from him was not pleasant. His appearance was not pleasant. But his father did not see him as a servant. His father see him as a son. Hallelujah. And not only did he see him as a son, he treated him as a son. He said to his other servants, come, go, 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 go kill the fatted calf. Praise God. Bring that robe. Bring that ring. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you smell like. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter what you think about yourself. There's a God, hallelujah, who will always be seeing you as a son. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Hallelujah. Royal priesthood, holy nation, a peculiar people. Hallelujah. Identify yourself as that and walk with pride and confidence knowing that the infirmities that you have are nothing to be compared with the strength and the beauty that you possess. Hallelujah. Believe in yourself. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your infirmity will not affect your identity. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God. Hallelujah. Your blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, sanctified, a victor, not a victim. A winner, not a loser. You are the head, not the tail. You are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. Fearfully and wonderfully made. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth its fruit in its season. The leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. Hallelujah. That's who you are. That's who you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. Bless be the name of God. It doesn't matter the quality of clothes. It doesn't matter the caliber of people that you're related to. It doesn't matter where you come from. Praise God. What matters is where you're going. Believe in yourselves. Believe in yourselves. Believe in yourselves. Praise God. One of the reasons why we as a race do not exceed more, we don't excel more, is that somehow we are tied to the past, we are tied to history, we are tied to what was done to us as a, as a race, we are tied, we, 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 we think as victims, praise God, but the time has come that we need to shed some of those things off and know, praise God Almighty, that God does not see the color of the skin, God does not see the past, God does not see the struggles, God does not see, hallelujah, the weaknesses, God does not see the frailties. God does not see the mistakes. God does not see the bad habits because the blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, has brought us into oneness with anybody and everybody in this world. We are elevated to a place in the sight of God that nobody can look down on us because we have moved high, so high that there's nobody can look down on us. Hallelujah. Let's believe in ourselves. Let's be the name of God and not identify ourselves by the negatives. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The third point I'd like for us to make. Hallelujah. My current location will not be my final destination. Hallelujah. My current location will not be my final destination. Can we say it together? My current location will not be my final destination. Praise God. You see me here now? You see me here now? Praise God. The, 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 the woman knew, the woman knew that Jesus was put in a tomb. Praise God. They knew that Jesus was put in a tomb. And so they expected that in a two and a half to three days afterwards, that Jesus would still be in the tomb because that's where they saw him last. And so they went back searching for Jesus, trying to anoint his body. Somebody said, praise God. But, 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 but the gardener, somebody that they thought was the gardener, an angel appeared unto this woman who was seeking for, for, for the body of Jesus and said, w -w -w why are you seeking for the living among the dead? He's no longer here. You left him here dead. Are you coming back to expect that he is dead? But the devil is a liar. Sometimes the devil sees where you are and the devil goes around the corner and comes back tomorrow and expect to see you in the same place and next week he goes and come back and expect to see you in the same place of degradation
condemnation, the same place of depravity, the same place, hallelujah, of frustration, the same place of depression, the same place of sadness, the same place of mourning. But let the devil know, praise God, if you see me here today, it doesn't mean I'm going to be here tomorrow because the, my present location will not be my final location. I'm going to be moving up. I'm going to be moving on. I'm going to be getting out of here. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. My current location will not be my final destination. It must have been, hallelujah, depressing for Mephibosheth to be in Lodibar for so many years. He made adjustments to this place. He was living a different life from the life he would have lived he was, if he was still in the palace. Now the word Lodibar means a place where, there, where there's no pasture, no green grass, no, 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 no prosperity. No, 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 a place where there's no flourishing, right. praise God. A place where it's isolated, no word, no communication. A place which was lacking well, 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 what he was experiencing. He was at a place that was lacking mental and emotional and psychological, spiritual sustenance. He was in a place where he was just locked away from every hope and every faith of, success, of every hope of success. Locked away from faith. Locked away from the possibility that he would ever fulfill the purpose for which he was born. Believing that his current location would be his final destination. He felt disconnected from God. Disconnected from friends. Disconnected from relatives. And also disconnected from being his true self. There are some of us here today who feel far behind on our journey towards self-actualization. We are very often not in the right state of mind. We are far from being mentally settled. But Joseph, if you're here today, know Joseph that the fact that you're in this bit does not mean that this is where you're going to be tomorrow. Joseph, you're here. If you're here, just know, having escaped the pit and now finding yourself in prison, still know that prison is not your final destination. Amen. You have been in the pit. You have been in prison. But that does not say that's where you're going to be tomorrow Amen. because your current location will not be your final destination. Best for the name of the living God. Amen. If you are the man that is lying by the pool of the set of 38 years with no one to take you to your healing. You know the story. 38 years he was lying by the pool. The angels would come stir the water and he would miss the chance every time because we have no one to put him in the water and sometimes we're looking for somebody to give us a nudge somebody to give us a little lift somebody else just to take us to another step and sometimes nobody is going to come we think nobody is going to come because that man after 38 years it's time to give up mm -hmm. After 38 years, you figure, you know what? That's it for me. I'm just going to lie down here until I die. Blessed be the name of God. But the day came. The day came. Hallelujah. When there was a different man standing over his bed. I don't like to say to somebody here today, there's a man standing over your bed. No, no, just turn to somebody and say, there's a man standing over your bed. Sounds funny, but say it. Even to the woman. Mm -hmm. There's a man standing over your bed. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that blessed day, after 38 years, Jesus came standing over his bed. And he gave Jesus a sad story. Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Do, 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 you, do, you, do you want to be made whole? Hallelujah. Do you still want to be made whole? Do you still believe you can get up out of this bed? Do you still believe that your current location will not be your final destination? Well, if you believe, get up and take up the bed 
and walk. And God is saying to somebody up in CRM today, get up! Hallelujah! Get up! It doesn't matter how much tears you cried. It doesn't matter how much pain you experienced. It doesn't matter how much you're bleeding. It doesn't matter how much you're broken. It doesn't matter how far you've fallen. It doesn't matter how sad you are. Get up! Hallelujah! Take up that bed and walk with confidence. Walk with faith. Walk with hope. Walk with determination. Walk with resilience. Walk with fortitude. Walk and believe that there's a God. Hallelujah! Who's going to move you from where you are? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I come against some resisting spirits right now. I'm coming up against, uh, hallelujah, some spirit of fear, some spirit of doubt. Uh, the devil is a liar. I come up against uh, all negative sources, all negative forces, all negative spirits. By the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost, uh, I'd like to tell somebody that God's about to move you. Pity party's over. Hallelujah. The pity party is over. As of today, the pity party is over. Hallelujah. As of today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The pity party is over. I ain't going to suffer for myself no more. Hallelujah. I ain't going to suffer for myself no more. Hallelujah. I'm going to move what I hear. I'm going to move what I hear. So Paul and Silas, we know that story. Locked up in prison, hands were bound, feet were bound. Hallelujah! Even the neck was bound. Yes, Lord. And there they were in the deep dungeon, cold and damp and dark. Hallelujah! Amen. But something told them, listen, our current. Paul looked on Silas and Silas looked on Paul and the spirit moved within them and I said you know what I just have a feeling you know Paul I, I, I have a feeling and Silas must have said you know Paul I'm having the same feeling <laughs> yeah, you know it's cold down here it's down down here it's hurting because we've been whipped it's hurting because we're bleeding it's hurt hallelujah we can't see a family it's hurting hallelujah but Paul said I have a feeling Silas and Silas said I have a feeling Paul hallelujah I have a feeling that our current location is not gonna be our final destination Paul said to Silas so what do you want to do and Saul said to Silas said to Paul what do you want to do and they both agree you know what we're gonna worship her yes sir yes sir hallelujah I'm so convinced that I'm gonna move out of here I'm not gonna wait until I move out of here to start worshiping. I'm gonna start worshiping right now. Hallelujah. The jailhouse rock, somebody call it. The jailhouse rock. Yeah, baby. Let's rock. Hallelujah. Let's get down. Hallelujah. Let's do a jig. The cha cha. Hallelujah. The merengue. Let's do a move. Hallelujah. Let's dance. And let's worship. Hallelujah. Ain't gonna stay here. No, baby. Ain't going to stay here. Ain't going to stay here. I'm not staying here. I'm not staying here. Turn to somebody and say, I'm not staying here. I'm in sadness, but I'm not staying here. Hallelujah. I'm grieving, but I'm not staying here. I'm weak, but I'm not staying here. I'm bleeding, but I'm not staying here. Hallelujah. I'm not staying here. Thank you, Lord. Angels were watching. Angels were watching to see what these fellows were going to do. And when the worship started, angels were like, huh? Angels drew nearer. And they said, listen, man, it's time to go. God is not impressed with your pity parties. No, expect God to serve you. Well, you're not Jamaicans. Don't expect God to be sorry for you. Don't try to win God's sympathy. Praise God. God is not moved through sympathy. God is moved by faith. You stand up and say, God, I know that you can deliver me. Hallelujah. I'm not saying, huh? I feel compelled. If you believe 
in me so much, I've got to do something about it. Hallelujah. And because of your faith and your fortitude and your resilience, the angel decided by the order of God that they had to do something. The very foundation of the prison shook. Hallelujah. Every cell, every door, every chain was shaken. And the bond were broken from every hand. Not just Paul and Silas was set free. Sometime when you bless God, not just your host is blessed. Your neighbors are blessed because of your worship. Hallelujah. Your brothers are blessed because of your worship. Your sisters are blessed because of your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Sometimes the entire church is delivered. Sometimes the entire church, the entire church is blessed because you decide you're going to dance in faith. You're going to dance in confidence. You're going to dance in hope. You know, hallelujah, I'm here today, but I'm gone tomorrow. Yeah, baby. I'm here today, but I'm gone tomorrow. I ain't staying in this prison. I ain't staying here. I gotta move. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move out of here. Hallelujah. Let God's people arise in faith. Let God's people arise with confidence and know that your current location is not your final destination. Pack your grip. Pack your suitcase. Put your stuff together. You're about to move. Yes! I'm going to pack my things. I'm about to go on a journey. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, charismatic for you. Let's know. Let's know. Let's know. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Here was a woman who built her house on the wall of Jericho. She built her house close to the entrance of Jericho. Because she had ulterior motives. She was a harlot, you see. Mm. And she built her house in a strategic location based on her craft. Because the men would come in and the men would leave. So the men would see her when they're going in, and the men would see her when they're coming out. And so that was her location. Based on the state of a fear that she had, based on her mindset, based on what she was involved in. She positioned herself in a place based on how she saw herself. And as far as she's concerned, this is where I'm going to be. Rahab, the harlot. Rahab. Yeah. Two guys came into the city. And somehow she found it in her heart to hide them from being killed by those who defended the city, Jericho. But something was in the making, you see. Sometimes where you place yourself is not where God intends for you to be. Sometimes when you make an assessment of yourself, you tell yourself, I may as well stay here. Emotionally, sentimentally, relationally, you tell yourself, I'm just going to stay here based on my circumstances. I'm almost done. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to build my house right here. But then things start happening in your life. And there was something that God was saying to Rahab. Rahab, where you are now is not where you're always going to be. Amen. You have been used. There is a, a power, a spirit that moved in you, causing you to save these two guys' lives, mm. to hide them. Mm. Because something is in the making for you. Rahab, not too long from now, there's going to be an army marching out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, heading towards Canaan, and Jericho is in my way. Pray God, you build your house here. You didn't know, you didn't even know what you were doing. Praise God, but Jericho is in my way. And I'm going to use you to bring down Jericho so that my army can get into the promised land. You don't know how important you are, Rahab. People don't identify 
with you by some ugly stuff. But Rahab, God is saying, I have chosen you because through you, hallelujah, my two spies' lives are going to be speared. Rahab, by this time, hallelujah, a few days from now, everybody in Jericho is going to be dead, but you are going to be alive because I'm sparing your life, Rahab. Hallelujah! Eventually, you are going to be married to a captain of the host of Israel. And through the union between you, Rahab, the sinful woman, and the captain of the house of Israel, through loins shall come hallelujah the Lord Jesus Christ the Lamb of God who shall take away all the sins of this world the world looks on you and says you're full of sin but through your lineage somebody will come that takes away the sin of this world you don't know that Rahab the harlot was a great 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 grandmother of Jesus Christ hallelujah and you believe that God cannot use you because of the mistakes that you have made and you believe that God cannot use you because of your reputation you think that God cannot move you because of what you've been through and you believe that you're not worthy of being blessed by God and you believe that the devil can trap you because of the past the devil is a liar. hallelujah your current location will not be your final destination It was true for Rahab. And it is true for you. Amen. And the fourth point. Before I close. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Distance will not keep me back from my inheritance. Distance will not keep me from my inheritance. If you were flying from Israel to Lodibar, it would be six hours if you were to fly. If you were driving, it would be over 50 hours driving. Mm -hmm. The distance between where Mephibosheth was and where he should have been was over 3,400 miles. That's a far place from where you expect your dreams to come true. A far place from your plans. A far place from where you're hoping to be. A far place from your blessings. A far place from your love. A far place. 3,400 miles. Over 50 hours. Driving over 6 hours by plane. It was far. And some of us believe that life has taken us too far away from realizing our dreams. Our circumstances have led us too deep into the forest. Too deep. The distance and time have separated us from what we were meant to be and what life, the life that we expect. We believe that the distance is too far and so you cannot inherit the blessings that God has for you. But I will say again, I ask you to say, distance will not keep me from my inheritance. It seems so far away from our opportunities, so far away from our solutions, too far away from where we were and where we want to be. Too far away from our peace of mind. Too far away from love and affection. Too far away from success and accomplishment. But far from home does not mean far from your destiny. Far from your goals, far from your objectives does not mean far from realizing your dreams. As I close today, I'd like for us to understand that Abraham went so far away from the land of Ur, of the Chaldees, far away from his father's land, far away from where he was supposed to have inherited. But God said, listen, Abraham, 
this line that I'm leading you to is so large. You can't walk it out so large. I'm giving you something better than where you're coming from. I'm going to take you into your destiny. You shall receive your inheritance. Abraham was blessed beyond measure. Moses was far from where he was born and far from the palace. If you're here today, Moses, you are way on the backside of the mountain, but there's a call that is coming to you. God wants to use you. Moses, we saw when you killed the Egyptian. I'm gonna look beyond that, said God. You hit him in the sand, Moses, but I'm gonna look beyond that because you were born for a purpose. Mm. And it seems as if you're far from your, your people and far from the purpose and the plan you had in mind. You're way up looking at the sheep instead of being in the palace of Pharaoh. Far from your mother, far from your sister, far from the Hebrews. And somebody today is believing that you are far. And there's too much distance. But God is saying, the distance will not drop you of your inheritance. You shall be called to lead up more than two million people. Amen. God's gonna show up in your life, Moses. And just by stretching the rod, you're gonna see the sea parted in front of you. Amen. Moses, I'm gonna be with you. A pillar of fire by night, a pillar of cloud by day. Moses, I have use for you. And God is saying that to every one of us today. Your distance will not rob you of your inheritance. Amen. Clap your hands. Celebrate the God. Hallelujah. That will make you have these four reassurances. For God is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Blessed be the name of God. May God continue to bless you richly. As you believe, as you continue to believe that your injury will not determine your destiny, your infirmity does not determine your identity, your current location will not be your final destination, and fourthly, distance will not keep you from your inheritance. It's been a pleasure. It's been a privilege. Trust the God that you serve. The Lord be with you. Let's be on our feet and bless the Lord God. And for the servant, he has used to minister unto us today. And let's pray that the spirit of wisdom that God has bestowed upon him will never depart him. Amen. Let's pray for.